Hey guys, welcome to Drawing with Abby. I've been drawing with Infinite Painter for a few weeks and I wanted to share my thoughts on this popular drawing app. When it comes to reviewing any drawing app, I want to look at four major categories. And that includes the drawing experience, drawing tools, interface, and editing tools. Once we break down those categories, I'm going to share my final thoughts and we'll see if Infinite Painter is really worth it. So let's get at it. The drawing experience in Infinite Painter is awesome and weird. Stick with me here. You see, Infinite Painter uses its own proprietary brush engine. This has allowed them to build painting brushes that can react and blend with other brush strokes without the need of a separate blending tool. So if you're a digital painter looking for a more traditional experience, this is the app for you. Another great thing about the brush engine is that the tilt sensitivity for the brushes is fantastic. Tilt is something I barely notice in other apps, even though they all support it. But here, using Tilt can produce some great line work, especially with some of the pencil brushes. It makes sketching on this app fun, and it's the first time I've seriously considered using my tablet for a life drawing session. That said, I do have two issues with the brush engine, one of which I'll get to later. The main issue is that the activation point for the pressure input is kind of wonky. I'll be drawing a thin, delicate line with an inking brush, but then as soon as I apply a slight amount of pressure, the app behaves if I just applied a ton of pressure and the lines become way more thicker than I intended. I don't really experience this in other drawing apps like Clip Studio or Arclow. The same amount of pressure applied to those apps produce a more consistent result. I thought maybe this was a device related issue, but the experience has been the same for both my phone and my tablet. This can be mitigated by diving into the brush settings of your tools and adjusting the pressure curve until you get it working the way you like. It's just, it's, it's just an annoying bit of extra work you have to do. But let's talk about those drawing tools. In Infinite Bader, we're given a ridiculously large list of brushes to choose from. Everything is divided into categories. You've got pens, you've got pencils, calligraphy brushes, markers, paint brushes, watercolors, sprayers, chalks, charcoals. Okay, you get the picture. It's a lot. Each category has 10 or so brushes, and shockingly, they're all pretty useful. For me, I tend to stick with the pen category since the soft pen does a great job of sketching and the manga brush is excellent for inking. My only issue here is the inability to import brushes from Photoshop and Clip Studio. This is that second issue with the brush engine. Since it's proprietary, it's incompatible with other brushes from other applications. So that library of APR or SUT brushes you have stored away? Yeah, you can't use them here. Instead, you'll have to rely on the custom brush creator if you need to recreate your favorite brush. Those same options are also available for each existing brush, allowing you to set custom pressure or tilt sensitivity on a per brush level, which is pretty awesome. The drawing tools don't just stop at the brushes. Infinite Painter offers useful creative tools to help with your illustrations. You have things like kaleidoscope options if you're looking to make symmetrical designs, shape tools, line tools, drawing tools for tricky ellipses, and by far the best perspective grid tools I've seen on any Android app. You even have isometric guides. So cool guys, so cool. While the limitations of the brush import can be a drag, Painter packs the drawing tools with so many features and options, it's tough to get mad about it. This is an area that Infinite Painter, in my opinion, really shines. I feel it has the best drawing interface for any Android drawing app. To me, a good interface does not clutter your screen. I'm looking at you, Krita. Instead, it gives you the essentials and then allows you to quickly access more tools if you need it. 
Painter organizes its UI with a compact bottom bar that houses the brush, color, brush size, and transparency selections. You can drag to sample colors and drag to increase or decrease the size and transparency. Of course, tapping on any of those options reveal a more detailed menu. Layer management is straightforward with a collapsible list, hold to rearrange, and tap to expose options like blending modes. The drawing tools and editing tools are housed within dropdowns that are pretty well organized. The icons are clear and you can tell what they do without having to read the titles. I do find myself getting confused on which tool is located in which dropdown, but that's a quirk I feel you get over pretty quickly once you spend some time in the app. All in all, just a good old solid UI. If the painter holds up well in this category too, the editing tools within the app allow you to do the basics like selections or transformations, but it builds on those things by allowing you to get a little bit granular about those tools. This is a theme that Painter carries throughout the majority of their editing tools. Tapping on a tool launches the most common use case of that tool, but there's always a sub menu located at the bottom that allows you to change the settings of the tools or gives you different options to play with. It's simple while giving you the ability to be a bit more advanced. I really love it. What's surprising is the inclusion of some editing tools that you don't really see on other Android drawing apps. For example, the liquify tool. This is a tool that is a staple in Photoshop and can have a tremendous amount of value, especially if you're doing something like digital painting. Painter's liquify tool offers the same kind of robust options you would see on a full desktop photo editing app. Painter also has a cool panels option in their editing tools if you were looking to make, let's say, a webcomic. It's not as robust as Clip Studio's panel manager, but it is a really nice addition to the app that you can get a lot of use out of. As you can probably tell, I'm pretty happy with this drawing app. While the drawing experience isn't as smooth as some of the other drawing apps, mostly because of that brush engine, Infinite Painter offers so many options and tools with a simple layout that it really doesn't matter. Yes. I wish the pressure sensitivity wasn't so sensitive right out of the box. And yes, it would be amazing if I could import my collection of brushes. But when you consider that the price of this app in comparison to the value that it brings, it's a pretty good deal. Infinite Painter offers a free version with limited brush selection and a fully unlocked version with a one-time fee of $9.99. That's right, one-time fee. Not some BS monthly subscription you have to pay for multiple devices. I'm looking at you, Clip Studio. It's just a simple, inexpensive, one-time fee. That's pretty refreshing. And you get a robust set of brushes, tools, and options to create some pretty slick and professional looking artwork. While I think Clip Studio Paint is the best Android drawing app, it's really meant for those who can make some sort of regular income for drawing. If you're a student or a hobbyist or someone that occasionally likes to make artwork for socials or commissions, then Infinite Painter is an amazing option for you. So that was my review for Infinite Painter. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys have any questions about Infinite Painter, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Until next time. Keep drawing.